And I've chosen you. Thank you. Um, for London, England, UK, Europe. Bloody hell. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> um, so tell us um, who you are and what you do. My name's Nabaya Garcia. I play the saxophone and a bit of flute. I am from London. Um, I started playing music at the age of 10. No, that's a lie. Five. I started playing saxophone at the age of 10. Um, what kind of music would you be listening to um, growing up? What got, took you there? So, my mum had a lot of music. She was very into classical music. Um, my sister, my older sister, studied classical music, classical singing at university. So, music has always played a massive part in all of our lives. I also like found my first two jazz CDs downstairs in the living room. One was The Piano, Herbie Hancock. To this day, one of my favorite records. My mum bought me CDs all the time. She was like, oh, listen to this, like, oh, listen to this. Just to really invite me and to be encouraged into doing music and, and, and fill my head with it, basically. You were brought up in Camden, um, which is a sort of part of North London, famous for its market mm -hmm. and for its differing music sort of scenes. Um, did that have an effect on how you grew up and the music you were listening to? What was it like living in Camden? There's like groups of <laughs> different vibes, you know, and you've got people walking around in Doc Martens and like spikes all over their clothes, like the chain phase, the chain of the keys, like the indie kids, the punks, like all of that. I was like not really part of any of that crew. Like I was, I was, I wasn't a punk. I wasn't a, like an indie kid. I was already very deep into playing like jazz. I started like kind of playing jazz at like, the age of 12. Most of the people that are playing bands with now, we met doing kind of workshops and masterclasses and, and music groups with Tomorrow's Warriors and at the Roundhouse, like maybe eight, eight to ten years ago. With Tomorrow's Warriors, what Tomorrow's are Tomorrow's Warriors are um, they're a youth. Well, what I was doing there was like a youth development program. They're an educational program, championing and supporting jazz in particular, um, and it's all for free, so they're funded. Um, so that kind of really opens up who can attend. Talk yeah. to me about London and talk to me about growing up in London and uh, what it is that makes London tick and buzz for you and what you love about it. Basically, to me, it's like London and the UK, but London for me, because I know London, it's an extreme mix of so many different cultures, you know. My mum wasn't born here. She was born in Guyana. She was born in the Caribbean. So I've had, like, all of those sounds and all of those thoughts and me going back and being like, okay, like, I want to like, I want to listen to what we were listening to the other day. Like, I want to hear some more soca. I want to hear some bashment. I want to hear some reggae. I want to hear some dub. Like that, along with all other styles of music are coming in a meeting in the middle. It's bass. Do you know what I mean? Like, my generation, we're mixing up, you know, dance music, like electronic music, like house, whatever you want to call it, like heavy stuff with music that we've grown up listening to. Um, it's like that's that's what happens. You absorb music that you've been around. What do you sort of aim to communicate with your music? What's your sort of uh, goal? I just want people to be present. I feel like a lot of people, or society in general, like it's it's a massive switch off. You know, you finish work, you go home, you watch TV, whatever. You're on your phone, blah blah blah. Um, you must remember that you have a voice. You have to. That's that's what we're doing. We're we're communicating with each other. We're communicating with you, like in as many different ways as we know how to in that moment. That's all the beauty of it, you know. That's part of. It's part of the excitement. It's never ever going to be the same again. Um, I just want people to be present. Okay, London is obviously very special to you and to me as well. And that's why I live here, I suppose. Uh, yeah. and, and I find it hard to kind of get away from this town because of this kind of constant reinvention and mm. competitiveness to a degree, which is great. It keeps it on edge and I think that's great for creativity. Um, is there any other place that you've been to as an artist that you've gone, oh yeah, this I could, I could go here. There's something here that I've grown, I like. When I went to New York a couple of years ago, I've been a few times... Um, but like going when you're a bit older and 
now that I know that I'm on the path of doing music and playing, I think I took in the city in a different, a completely different light to, I, to the way I had before. The energy is everywhere. The energy is on the street. The energy is in the clubs. The energy is, it's just, it's alive. London is my home, but I'm now quite excited to venture further afield and play with musicians in as many places as I possibly can. Are you more likely as a musician to find yourself being sucked into continental Europe than being sucked up to Northern England? Which sort of, where are you getting pulled more? At the moment, I feel the pull, especially looking at where we're going to be for the next year, is, is Europe. Do you identify with being European? I think um, that's a big question. But quickly, I think technically I am European, but I don't think I've ever said, yeah, I'm European in my life because I think you have to be a bit more specific than that. I think it's just better to be more specific than, yes, I live in Europe. I'm British, I guess. Really great to chat to you. I, I, it's been such a brilliant year. I've heard you so many times and I cannot <laughs> wait to see what comes out in the years to me come. Me too. Thank you. Thanks for having me.